All right, welcome to another edition of Instagram Live. It's your boy, Maron, and we're here to chat about the September 2019 LSAT, which is less than 48 hours away for most of you out there. Obviously, if you are a Sabbath observer, Shabbat Shalom, you'll be taking it on Monday the 23rd. Uh, but either way, we want to dive right in here because we do not have time to waste. Uh, probably going to have a ton of questions um, that we're going to get answered here about, you know, how to, you know, spend these last, you know, few days or, or a couple of days before uh, your, your big L set. Uh, things to be aware of on exam day. Um, we have some announcements from LSAC that we're going to share as well. Um, so let's dive right in. So first things first, as always, if you find yourself struggling, you need help, you need advice, reach out. Just shoot us a text, LSAT to 310-818-7743, and we'll schedule a free consult, free, totally free of charge. Um, and we can chat about anything that's giving you trouble and see how we can help. Um, we've been doing it for a while, so there's not much we haven't seen. Um, some other things to be aware of, if you've missed any of the previous Instagram live Q&As, they are all available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So just search at LSAT Max uh, and you can watch all of those. A lot of great information, particularly on the digital LSAT, because everyone should be uh, reminded right now that this is going to be the digital LSAT for every taker in North America. Uh, no more 50-50 like we saw in July. Every taker is going to get the digital LSAT on a Microsoft Surface tablet. So please make sure you are familiar with the digital LSAT format. If you haven't been able to do a digital LSAT yet, get up right now, leave this Instagram live, come back, watch the replay later, uh, get into practice LSATs by LSAT Max. Again, free app on Android tablets and iPads. Um, and it comes with a free digital LSAT that you can take. Uh, now, we probably wouldn't recommend taking that as a full-length LSAT this late uh, in the process. We don't want to burn ourselves out before the big day, uh, but we would recommend doing it as individual sections. And remember, LSAC is also offering three free digital LSATs on their website, which are prep test 71, 73, and 74. So that's a ton more uh, digital LSATs, or not a ton more, but 12 sections uh, that you can expose yourself to between now and uh, Saturday's LSAT to make sure that you're comfortable with it. And again, that's something that we've discussed uh, at length, um, particularly in the, the question and answer that we did on Logic Games, is that the Logic Games section is going to be the most different in terms of the digital LSAT. Because now you're doing your work on paper pencil, scratch paper, but you're answering the questions on the tablet. And again, just heightens the importance of staying organized um, keeping your work nicely and neatly organized, keeping your hypotheticals, right, for any local questions, nicely and neatly organized so that you can continue to rely on uh, that work as you progress in a section. Um, all right, so let's dive into LSAC's announcement. So we got this uh, email from LSAC that we definitely wanted to uh, read to you guys. Um, the idea here is a couple of just important announcements to remember. Um, so the first thing is, while the LSAT is going to be digital, you should still bring number two pencils and erasers because you will be provided scratch paper, right? And you're going to want pe pencils and, and erasers to work on that. Uh, you will also receive a stylus. Um, now, again, the idea of the stylus is to replace your finger, right? Because the obviously the, the digital LSAT has the touch technology. Um, so obviously you can use it to advance questions, highlight, underline, um, do all those things. You cannot write, though. Keep that in mind. All your writing is going to be done on the scratch paper that's provided to you. And something, again, that we should emphasize, because it did come up in our uh, question and answer after the July LSAT, is that a lot of people complained about the stylus and highlighting and underlining. Now, just one thing to, to be aware of, because students complain about our app all the time as well, and just remember that this technology response to the pressure. So it's not just rubbing your finger on the screen that's doing it. You want to make sure that you're tapping and exerting some pressure onto the screen as you're trying to highlight uh, and or underline. Um, so definitely uh, make sure uh, that you do that. Um, we're going to go over 
allowable items because I do think that that's really important thing that we definitely want to discuss. So we'll talk about that. And just remember here that September takers are going to receive their scores on Monday, October 14th. So everyone uh, take a note of that because um, that is a big day for anybody who's taking the, the digital LSAT this weekend. Now remember, you will not have the same ability to see your score and cancel, right? You can still cancel, um, but you will not have the ability to see your score in advance before deciding if you want to keep it or cancel like you did for the, for the July exam. Um, now, I guess, you know, part of that discussion is something we'll jump into because it is a question that we did receive. And again, guys, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just drop them right in the chat, right? Uh, we will get through uh, as many of these as possible uh, as soon as we get done with just some log logistical information that we want to make sure that everyone is aware of. Um, so in terms of should you take the, the exam this weekend if you're not feeling ready, right? Um, we get this question a lot and it's natural to not feel ready. Um, I think that's part of what you're dealing with with the LSAT. And one of the reasons LSAT Max offers the instant lifetime access is sometimes this process can take longer than you were hoping, right? But again, given the fact that it is the number one factor in law school admissions, uh, it, it is something that you should definitely spend time on. Um, so don't be discouraged if you're not where you want to be just yet. Just always remember my story, right? My journey took me seven months, um, and that was starting with the correct approach from the beginning, right? So if you've been out there, you know, self-studying, looking around, using some resources that might not be providing the best strategies or techniques, it's going to be even more challenging, right? So these things are natural. Just don't get discouraged. Again, if you have any questions uh, that we can help with, just shoot us a text. We will jump on the phone with you guys, uh, free consult, uh, and, and chat about really anything that's giving you trouble. So please take advantage of that resource if you are struggling. Now, in terms of taking the September LSAT, obviously, I'm not a believer that we should take the LSAT if we don't have a realistic chance of achieving our target score because it's not doing anything for us. Now, some students like to do the test runs, right? Oh, I want to do a, you know, go see what it's like for real. But if you're walking in knowing it's not for real, is it really for real right now? Uh, I, I do agree that taking the LSAT live for the first time is a very different experience than taking simulated practice LSATs. I just don't know if you know that it's a test run, if that same kind of, uh, you know, because it's really the stress and the pressure uh, that, that makes it a different ex experience for you. Um, now, the good news is law schools no longer average LSAT scores. So if you take the September LSAT, you don't do as well as you would have liked. It's not the end of the world, right? Uh, as long as you can get the score that you need, that's the score they're going to consider. Um, so that's good news. Now, other thing to be aware of, though, is that now LSAC's new retake policies are going into effect, right? So this idea of the new digital LSAT is going to bring us unlimited LSAC retake or LSAT retakes is not true. Um, and so the way it's going to work is you can take it three times in any year, five times in any seven, uh, five year period, and then seven year, seven times in your life. Um, so three, five, seven. Now, obviously, if you take the September LSAT and you don't do well, there goes one of your three attempts this year. Um, again, hopefully we're not going to keep taking it until we're ready. You know, the next time we take it, we're going to be ready. So, again, not the end of the world. And again, remember, all previous attempts from before the September 2019 LSAT will not count towards LSAC's new retake policy. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit about what we can bring and what we should bring to the exam. Um, so what you're going to be bringing here is a, a Ziploc bag, um, the one gallon size. Um, you have to put everything into this Ziploc bag. Now, obviously, you're going to want your ID. Do not forget your ID. In fact, get it right now. Put it in the Ziploc bag so you have it, right? The last thing you want to do is go through this whole process of studying for the LSAT, working hard, going through all these long nights, stressing, and then show up on your exam day and not have your ID, right? That is not how we want to start tomorrow or, or Saturday off. So make sure you have your ID. Um, then other things that you can bring, again, number two pencils and erasers. Uh, you can bring a highlighter. Um, you can bring a pencil sharpener, you can bring tissues, uh, you can bring a drink, 
uh, in a plastic container, uh, maximum size, uh, 20 ounces, and, and you can bring a snack. No aluminum cans, though. Again, remember, everything must fit in this Ziploc bag, and it must be sealed. Now, remember, this is the digital LSAT. So if you have seen this or have this and you're taking it to North America, throw it away because the, now the digital LSAT is going to be a digital timer. So you don't need to worry about bringing an analog timer in anymore. Thank God. Um, everyone has the same timer and, and uh, it'll be really super easy to deal with and obviously reset in between sections because everyone knows the pain with the analog timers. Um, was having to reset it during during the section, even with the rotating bezel, uh, it still took time. So great that that is no longer something you guys need to worry about. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of stuff to bring. Now let's talk a little bit about the forms of ID, right? Again, just make sure it's a recognizable photo of you, right? Recent with your name, last name, date of birth. Um, and again, it must match your ID uh, ticket as well, right? The name has to match it exactly, right? common forms, obviously passports, driver's license, right? State IDs, U.S. military, U.S. permanent resident, right? Canadian permanent resident cards. Uh, again, just don't forget to bring your ID on exam day. Now, other things to think about in terms of logistics. If you haven't had a chance to take a drive to your testing location, I would suggest doing that tomorrow if possible. Um, again, it's nice to get a sense of where you're going, just so it's not something you have to worry about for the first time. Saturday morning, because again, remember, Saturday's LSAT is the 8.30 variety, right? So this is going to be super bright and early. It's not the luxury of the noon exams, right? So we want to make sure that we know where we're going um, and we're able to get there in a timely fashion. So definitely do that uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. Now, one of the questions that we get all the time um, is what to do. Yeah, here it is. Fantastic. Thank you, H uh, Hales, Judd. Um, I appreciate you reading my mind and asking the question that everyone wants to know the answer to. What should you be doing the day before morning go? So tomorrow and Saturday morning. Well, good news is Saturday morning, you're not going to have a ton of time, right? Uh, it's 8.30 variety. It's not the noon. So um, hopefully Saturday morning, you're getting up, getting ready and heading out to your testing center. Um, but in terms of tomorrow, what should you be doing? Now, I'm a big believer that tomorrow is not going to make a difference one way or the other to your LSAT score, except for the fact that it could have a detriment if you do things tomorrow that are going to have a negative impact on your ability to be at optimal performance uh, on Saturday. Or again, if you're if you're taking you know Monday, um, this would be Sunday, right? Um, I think the key thing for you to do on the day before your LSAT is relax. Now, if you want to review some things, sure, right? If you want to go over maybe the keyword indicators for sufficient and necessary conditions, um, you want to review the difference between either or and not both, um, sure, right? You want to go over the difference between sufficient with, uh, or strengthen with necessary question stems and strengthen with sufficient question stems, fine, right? But I would not be doing any full length simulated LSATs, no chance. I would even avoid doing individual sections unless maybe, you know, I'm doing them first thing tomorrow morning, right? Uh, again, I just feel at this point we have done the work and, and what we do, you know, 24 hours before an exam that's not a subject-based exam is not going to matter. So uh, I think what's important is to really take it easy, relax. I think something to really be aware of, though, is, you know, if it's your first time taking it, you, you, you might not have experienced this, is there's a tendency to not be able to fall asleep the night before the LSAT. Um, and obviously with the LSAT being, you know, at eight, eight o'clock in the morning, not getting good, a good night's rest, um, it's not going to be an ideal scenario. So something to definitely consider doing is doing some things that, you know, get you to be a little bit fatigued. Maybe go work out, go for a run, go for, um, a swim, whatever you do generally to work out. Hey, I think, you know, tomorrow, uh, in the afternoon is a great idea, um, I think obviously, you know, getting to sleep at a reasonable hour tonight, getting up early tomorrow morning, right? So then, you know, again, trying to make it so that when Friday night rolls around or, or, or Sunday night rolls around, uh, you are able to fall asleep. Um, because I, I do think there's a tendency for your mind to be wide awake at that time because of, you know, impending doom. Trust me, I remember, I remember laying awake 
in in my bed trying to fall asleep the night before my LSAT, and it was not easy. Um, so that is definitely something uh, I would um, suggest um, doing uh, tomorrow. And, and, and another tip I have too, we'll talk about uh, in a moment about uh, what we can do the the morning of, even though it is early, uh, that might help you uh, feel better. So. A question here, does the new digital format have a timer on the screen? Uh, so again, guys, these kind of questions, uh, you know, I'm really hoping we're not taking the exam tomorrow um, because, you know, these are things that we should not be trying to figure out the day before or, or, or you know, uh, two days before the LSAT, right? We should be taking simulated digital LSATs, mimicking exam conditions throughout our prep, right? And remember, you know, there's really no excuse anymore because, you know, with our standalone app that we've, we've talked about, um, you can take digital LSATs a la carte, right? You know, you don't have to buy the course. We offer every LSAT ever released in the digital format that mimics it. Um, and in terms of seeing what the timer looks like, it's in the top right corner. And so it will be there for every student. And, um, you know, I get that, you know, it's nerve wracking to see the time. But again, I do think, you know, timing is important. I don't think um, anything you want to think about um, I mean, obviously, you know, if you look at a time and it freaks you out, try to avoid looking at it. But remember, you will get the pop up for the five minute warning. Um, but again, the beauty of this format now is we never have to think about an analog timer or finding an analog watch to bring into exam day uh, to do that. So, again, um, please, if you haven't, uh, go and simulate digital LSATs. And again, if you wanted to buy more than a few, we do offer uh, the digital prep test bundles where you can save a little bit by, by buying a bundle as opposed to buying them a la carte, but they are available a la carte. The older exams start at $2.99. Uh, the newer exams are $9.99. Um, so please, guys, uh, particularly those of you who are, you know, have more time, you're taking October, you're taking November, please take the time um, to get super comfortable with the digital LSAT experience. All right. Moving right along. Um, okay, so here's a question from uh, Serene. Can you explain a little bit about the writing section? So, sure, and this should be quick because remember, guys, the writing section is not score. It's not part of your scaled LSAT score. And even better now, it is not even part of your exam day. So when you go on Saturday or you go on Monday, you will take five sections, your four score sections, the experimental section, and that's it. The writing sample now, you're going to log into your LSAC account online within one year of your exam date, and you're going to complete the writing sample on an online portal, right? Now, again, we definitely want to try. We want to form complete sentences. We want to pick inside and argue for that side and argue for it coherently using that five paragraph format that we learned way back when, right? Intro, body paragraphs, conclusion, right? But again, it's not scored, so not something to really worry about. Here's another question about the timer. Will there be a timer throughout sections on the tablet or just the five minute timer? So again, these questions are extremely concerning to me. There's going to be a timer for the entire section, the entire time in the top right hand corner of the screen, right, right over here. You're going to have this timer that's going to be counting down from 35 minutes. When it hits five minutes, it will give you a pop up warning telling you that you have five minutes remaining, right? But yes, you will be able to see that timer throughout the entire, um, section or not even section, the entire exam. All right. What to do if you are starting to score lower before the test? Well, uh, at least so, so I think this is a tendency when you're starting to burn yourself out, right? I think what happens here is, you know, students are go, go, go. They're taking, you know, three, four, five full length simulated digital LSATs a week under time pressure, right? That's a good way to turn your mind into mashed potatoes uh, right before your, your big exam day, right? Um, and so I think, you know, one of the things that we talk about with LSAT Max is having a balance, right? We understand the importance of wanting to practice under time pressure, but we also understand the mental fatigue 
that comes with a full, uh, full length five section, uh, simulated exam under time pressure. Um, and so, you know, what our recommendation is, you know, try to only take one full length exam a week. The rest of the week do individual sections. That's a great way to continue to practice under time pressure without burning yourself out, uh, with a full, full length exam. Now, I also think it's really important. A lot of students overlook this. They only take four sections when they take their simulated practice exams because the digital prep test has four sections or the, the, the exam that LSAC is releasing um, has four sections. Now, uh, remember, um, your exam is going to have five sections and you're not going to know which section is experimental. So for your purposes, it's important to be able to treat all five sections the same. It's important to be able to maintain focus during five sections. And again, four sections is very different from five sections. So if you're wondering how to simulate a five section digital LSAT, it's very simple. Take a section from a different LSAT, put that in your digital LSAT, your four sections, four, one plus four is five. I know we're not math majors, we're going to law school, but there you go, five section LSAT, right? Now, in terms of how to do it with our app, what you wanna do is just do one section first, right? So go to, you know, June, um, I don't know, 2000, section one you do that section right you complete it and then you launch the june 2019 exam as your prep test right and there you have it right because then you notice you're going to have done the experimental section which again is a real section so we're going to check to see how we did on that we're going to get feedback we're going to review those questions we're going to you know we're going to learn from our mistakes uh, we're going to treat it just like a real lsat section because that's what it is uh, but for the purposes of our simulated exam, it's an experimental section. You take that one first, then you do two sections. You have the 15 minute break, and then you have the last two sections, just like a five section LSAT. So please make sure uh, you are doing that. Um, and again, uh, Alyssa, I, I would try to recommend, you know, uh, again, assuming that you feel comfortable with the strategies, right? Because don't overlook that part of the equation, right? If you're not seeing improvement, you know, a lot of times it's not because you're not putting in the time, you're not putting in the effort. It's because the materials that you're relying on aren't putting you in a position to maximize your, your LSAT score. All right. I love it, guys. Keep it coming. So uh, is the LSAT a tablet or a computer screen? So it's being administered on a Microsoft Surface Pro tablet. So it's just like an iPad, uh, an Android tablet, right? So it, it looks like this. Um, you will be able to, to prop it up or lay it flat on the screen, uh, on the desk. Um, but it is a tablet with touch technology, right? So you'll be able to, you know, jump around, flag. Uh, again, guys, our, our app, uh, Practice LSATs uh, by LSAT Max mimics it on every LSAT ever released. Um, and obviously LSAT Max does as well. Uh, will the scores take still take three weeks to get back even though it's all electronic yes they will and now remember uh, this was part of lsac's announcement that we received uh, the september lsat scores will be released on monday october 14th um, so even though it is an electronic exam now we are not seeing uh, scores being released instantly like you see with the gmat or gre and we talked about this in one of the Instagram Q and A's. The reason for that is if you've ever taken one of those um, release prep tests where the question says, um, uh, uh, it's blank and it says item removed from scoring, right? And so what's happening there is, you know, even though LSEC obviously has the experimental section uh, where they test these uh, questions, right? To make sure they maintain the bell curve. Every now and then a question gets through after the exam the data tells LSAC that this question doesn't meet the requirements. They don't feel comfortable with keeping it as a scored item and they remove it from scoring. And so I think that's why even with the, the new digital LSAT, we won't see an instant turnaround time. Um, but again, you know, October uh, 14th, um, that's the, that's the um, expected release date. Remember for, for the July exam, um, the expected release date was August 28th, but they actually were released one week before that uh, on August 21st. Um, so it's possible. Um, all right. So let's take a look. D Tyler. So I am worried. Let's be honest. I got a 148 the first time I took that. Hey, that's exactly what I scored the first time I took it. So you should feel 
like you're in good company. At least I hope, maybe. Um, I don't know. So I've started the LSAT Max course and I've booked my house on the second day in October. Any advice to prep in a two month period now a month away? So, you know, uh, obviously, as you've noticed, you know, our, I think our recommended uh, schedule for the course is about 10 weeks. Um, and that's without the, the second part of the calendar, which is the practice and review, practice and review portion, right? So, um, you know, Tyler, it's a tough question to answer because I think it really depends on also what your target score is, right? If your target score is 170 or higher, you know, October's going to be a stretch. Now, obviously, showing improvement between now and October, I think, you know, having a double digit improvement is very realistic. I think we can definitely expect to try to get, you know, closer to the 160s. Uh, but that's something that I would highly recommend reaching out to us, particularly as a student. Uh, and let's schedule a call uh, to talk about your prep in more detail. And what I'll do is I'll have, um, you know, my, my, my intern reach out to you uh, via Instagram as well. We'll schedule a call and we'll go over that in more detail because I do think, you know, the more we can get to, to know your personal situation, uh, the better advice we can give you. Um, Samantha, the features are the same from LSAT Max with the real digital LSAT. So yes, they are with the exception of two things. On the real digital LSAT, logical reasoning will also be this split screen. So you'll have the stimulus here and then you'll have the question stem and answer choices here, right? Um, in LSAT Max uh, and in practice LSATs, our logical reasoning is just one screen. Um, the other thing that's currently not live in LSAT Max or, or practice LSAT by LSAT Max is um, the highlight feature for reading comp. So if you remember, paper pencil LSAT had line reference questions where it would say the author mentions uh, Muhammad Ali in line 33 uh, for and then you would have the line reference line 33 so now what's happening in the new digital LSAT is they just highlight the passage for you in our versions we still do the line references although updates are forthcoming um, that will change that but other than that it is an identical uh, experience um, All right, Matthew Kirkwood, great question. Do you suggest doing a few logic games or logical reasoning questions the morning of? I think that is a phenomenal question and actually something that I wanted to mention anyway. So I appreciate you bringing it up, Matt. I would highly recommend doing that the morning of. And what I did is I just got a handful of logical reasoning questions and toss up logical reasoning questions. Again, please do not be picking any flawed parallel reasoning questions to greet yourself the morning uh, on Saturday morning, right? That is a recipe for disaster. Because the, the thing to keep in mind is what is the purpose of what we're doing with this little trick here? All we're trying to do is get your mind into LSAT taking mode on something that's not a real scored LSAT question, right? And so by looking at, you know, a couple of logical reasoning questions in the parking lot, we're getting our mind into LSAT taking mode on things that aren't going to be scored, right? Whereas if you wait and you wait and you sit there and you go through obviously the process of getting everything set up and then the first thing that gets you into LSAT taking mode is a real question on your LSAT, you know, I think that, you know, having a few, you know, test questions, toss up test questions, you know, before is a great idea. So yes, Matthew, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, the morning up. And again, toss-ups, guys, toss-ups. Uh, how long should we take on each logical reasoning question? So on average, it's a minute and 24 seconds, right? And again, I think something that we should talk about here, because a lot of students um, are trying to go zero to 100. And what I mean by that is, I think it's really important to understand what you need to accomplish in terms of the number of questions correct per section to achieve your target score. Because that's all we care about, right? All you care about is going in to the exam and achieving your target score, whether that's a 150, whether that's a 160, whether that's a 170, right? Now, obviously, we would, even if you don't want to go to the best schools, we would say, hey, let's try to target, you know, higher LSAT scores just because of, 
you know, the merit-based scholarships, right? If we can, you know, get some scholarships to go to some of these lower ranked schools, our concerns of, you know, the debt burden, the job prospects would be alleviated, right? But that's all we're trying to accomplish, right? Get you accepted. And so what I think you want to do, a lot of students try to finish every section on time and they race to do it. And obviously by racing to do it, your accuracy suffers, right? So imagine you finish a logical reasoning section in 35 minutes, you get to every all 25, 26 questions and you get 12 right. Now let's say you slow down. And instead of getting to all the questions, you're only able to get to 20 of them. But you get 14 correct. 14 correct is better than 12 correct. Right? And so that's something that you should seriously consider if you're struggling to achieve your target score and the timing is an issue for you. Right? Again, obviously, that only works, you know, in certain parts of the scale, right? If you're shooting for the 170s, right? Unfortunately, the margin of error is so small um, that you're not really able to to have that kind of, you know, luxury. You really need to try to get to, to everything, right? But, it, you know, when you're, you know, trying to get into the 150s, you know, trying to then get to the 160s, you know, these are things to keep in mind. You don't need to be perfect, right? It's all about the number of questions you get correct. And if slowing down allows you to get more questions correct per section, fantastic. Right? Another reason why we say, you know, when you're, you know, trying to get to the one, you know, or you're in the 150s trying to move, don't worry about things like flawed parallel reasoning questions, right? They're not doing anything for you, right? They're really challenging one. They're super rare too. And they love to put them 23, 24, so that you don't even get to the questions behind it, not to mention get that question wrong too. So remember, if you see that now, particularly now with the digital LSAT, because before our concern was, if you jump a question, please don't make a bubbling error, right? Because that would be the worst possible scenario, right? We do all this work and then we make a careless bubbling error and, and all that hard work goes to waste. But now with the digital LSAT, we can't make bubbling errors, right? It's digital. So if you get flawed parallel reasoning question at the end of the section, jump it, do the questions behind it, then come back and, and tackle that question if you have time. Uh, here, uh, so uh, obviously, guys, we're getting a ton of questions, so I'm gonna try to get through these as as, as quickly as possible. I appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, I, I'm thrilled you guys find these useful. Uh, and, and again, obviously, we will continue to do them. Um, so uh, really, going to be focusing on the September takers because um, you know, obviously, uh, their time is now. All right, so uh, here's a question. Is it smart to do one last full-length practice test tomorrow? Absolutely not. Please do not do that, right? That is not a good idea. If you want to do some timed practice tomorrow, do some individual sections, right? And what I mean by that is just take a logical reasoning section, give yourself 35 minutes, do it, right? Think about it. You could do, you know, two in the morning, two in the early afternoon, you still went through four sections, right? But it's a much different experience than the five section uh, practice LSAT from a mental fatigue perspective. And the last thing we want to do the day before your LSAT um, is um, burn yourself out. Dirk, anyone reading this, did he say the first section is always the experimental one? Absolutely not. I did not say that because that would be fake news. That would be somebody misleading you. And I'm only here to give you valuable, truthful information. And so the experimental section can be any of the five sections. It used to always be before the break, but that has changed. So now any of the five sections are fair game. Now, you can get a sense of one, if like if you get two logic game sections, one of those had to have been experimental. Same idea if you get two reading comp sections, right? One of those had to be experimental. Obviously, you won't be able to tell between the two, right? Um, but at least you would know that your experimental was one of those two sections. Now, what I was saying was in terms of simulating a five section digital LSAT experience, uh, because LSAC only releases the four scored sections, how to do that in our digital LSAT simulator app. And the idea was take a section from a different exam first as your experimental section, launch the digital prep test, uh, and then you would have 
uh, your, your same kind of five section experience. Uh, yeah, you do not know, absolutely. Um, oh, great, you guys are gonna answer this. Let me catch up, I apologize. Um, all right, let's go through the Main point questions, how to quickly identify the conclusion and premises that create it. So how to quickly do it, um, you know, I think this is something that comes from, from practice, right? Remember, a couple of things to keep in mind. You know, the idea is that if there's an argument, there's a reason that this thing was written. So try to ask yourself, what is the point this author is trying to convey to you, right? Um, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, really, um, important thing and then the other thing that you know you can always use the therefore trick right so imagine you have three sentences a b c all you want to do is continue to rearrange the argument and put therefore in front of the sentence that you think is the conclusion and see if it makes sense so i would go a b therefore c or i would go c a therefore b right and i would do it until one of them made sense now um remember in terms of lsat max if you guys are using lsat max and you haven't seen our written explanations that we just went live with a couple of weeks ago, four main point questions, just re-download either the course or that section because now every single one of those questions has a detailed explanation, including you know st stimulus summaries, uh, answer choice anticipations, um, and key takeaways. So uh, uh, definitely take advantage of that if you're struggling with identifying uh, main points. Is there a letter to guess that is more prominent for completing a section? No, right? So, um, you know, as you can imagine, they do a very good job at keeping the percentage of the answer choices as close to 20% as possible, right? So, listen, just pick, a, pick an answer choice and, and guess. Now, obviously, the key here is make sure you're guessing, right? There is no penalty for incorrect answer choices. So, if you're at the end of the section, the beauty is the touch technology which is da -da -da -da, done right no more having to bubble in scantrons none of that nonsense right so there's absolutely no reason to leave any question unanswered on the digital lsat uh, get it in how serious are they about the photo i think mine might be a little too blurry now um, i'm assuming you're talking about the photo that you're bringing and the photo that you upload um you know, I think, you know, if you're concerned about it, I would just try to recommend maybe bringing some additional forms of identification, right? I think, you know, obviously the purpose for these things are to make sure that you are who you say you are. Um, so if you're worried about that, just bring, maybe bring your passport, your driver's license, you know, have, you know, all your credit cards, um, school ID, anything you can bring that says, hey, this is me, um, just in case they, they give you trouble, um, you can, you can point to something. Um, so Ruben's question, should I practice on the same tablet that they use for the LSAT? So, um, you know, if you, if you look at what we think about it from a company perspective, we don't think that that's relevant at all because our, our app is not even available on Microsoft Surface Pro tablets. And, and, and the reason for that is nobody has Microsoft Surface Pro tablets. Um, so our app only does it on iPads and, and Android tablets. I don't think it matters because, you know, I think all that matters is a screen that's the same size, right, that has the touch technology, um, that's really all that matters, right? And obviously the beauty of the tablets, as opposed to the online simulated digital LSATs, is there's no internet required here, at least for, for LSAT Max uh, and practice LSATs. So you don't need to worry about a scenario where you're on section five and your, your internet goes out and, and then you don't even know how you did, uh, which would obviously be devastating. So I think any tablet will suffice. Uh, again, just, you know, obviously, I wouldn't go get the iPad 12 uh, or, or the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, right? That's huge, right? It's not the same screen size that you're going to be seeing on exam day. So get an iPad, you get the regular iPad, right? Uh, get the regular Android tablet, the normal size tablet, um, because obviously from a screen size perspective, we want it to be similar. We want it to have the touch technology. And ideally, we don't need to rely on internet connection while we're taking our simulated exam. Um, Oh, something else to bring up, because I do know we have people from other exams joining us. If you haven't registered for your LSAT and registration is open, do it immediately. If registration is not open, 
make a note for the day that it opens and register on day one. Because what's happening is uh, exam centers are filling up rapidly. Students are getting waitlisted, right? Listen, we, we know the stress already from the rolling admissions process and all that stuff, right? Um, the last thing that, that we want to, to, to worry about is not being able to take the exam that we were planning to take because uh, of logistical things uh, like um, the, 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 the testing center being full. Uh, Nick, in terms of the, the amount of scratch paper that you'll receive, um, the last report we got after the July 2019 LSAT uh, was uh, 14 pages of scratch paper in the scratch paper booklet. Um, Now, I would assume that if you need more, you would get more. They would probably take your existing book and, and swap it out. Um, but the one book that they give you is 14 pages, which just between me and you is more than sufficient for the entire exam. But some people might want to write a lot of stuff down. Who knows? Um, yes, you don't get to choose where you're sitting. Uh, they're going to assign you a seat. Um, and yeah, just be aware, guys, that there is going to be, you know, when you get to the testing center, you're going to check in, they're going to check IDs. There's going to be some logistical stuff taking place before your exam starts. I'd be surprised if your exam started uh, before about 9, 8, 9 a.m. Um, although maybe with the digital stuff, it, it, it's faster. Um, if you take the November exam, is that sufficient for acceptance for 2020? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Remember, most... Even the best schools, the application deadlines, I want to say, are like February 1st, right? I want to say Harvard's is February 1st. So you're going to have your LSAT score well in advance of that deadline, right? Now, obviously, you'll be applying later in the process. But remember, when I was accepted to Harvard Law School, I finished my application in mid-December, right? So I was, I had to got my LSAT score and I, you know, um, took me some time to still uh, apply, but I was accepted. So what matters more than when you apply is having the, the application that's going to give you a realistic chance. And that starts with your LSAT score. But the other thing, obviously, to keep in mind is the personal statement, right? And that's why I applied so late. I was working on my personal statement and it was worth it. And so, you know, if you're not aware, you know, we do offer admissions consulting services. If you are worried about your application, uh, please reach out to us. We are happy to help guide you uh, on all aspects of it, but obviously the, the most important part uh, being your personal statement. And obviously if you text uh, LSAT to 310-818-7743, uh, we can also chat about um, your, your application. Um, all right, moving along. Jules, is LSAT, LSAT Max's method for reading comp to read the question for... You, logical reasoning. Okay. Uh, is also a method for, for logical reasoning to read this, this question stem before the stimulus? No, we do not recommend that. Um, and the reason we don't recommend that is it, it completely misses the, the, the purpose of what's being tested on logical reasoning, right? What, um, what's being uh, tested on logical reasoning, uh, the number again, uh, sorry, um, Shayla, it's 310-818-7743. And again, guys, remember this will be available for replay for 24 hours on Instagram, and then we will put it um, on, on our YouTube page as well for replay. Um, but going back to, to the question about, um, do we recommend reading the question stem before the stimulus? We don't. And, and I know a lot of companies do do that. I feel it's a gimmick, and it's a gimmick that makes you lose sight of what's gonna make you successful on logical reasoning. Now, what they're testing on logical reasoning is your ability to encounter flawed arguments and understand that. Whether that means strengthening it by fixing it, whether that means weaken it by pointing out the issue, right? Or, you know, pointing out the, the error in abstract terms in terms of errors in reasoning, right? Or, or finding an argument that has the same error, flawed parallel reasoning, right? But you notice it's all, it's all coming back to this idea that something's wrong with this argument. And that's what they're testing. So you notice, if I understand that argument, it doesn't matter if they ask me to strengthen it, weaken it, find the same flaw, just point out the flaw in abstract terms, it makes no difference. I'm going to be in a position to answer that question, right? And so that's why for us, 
What matters most is the stimulus. The question stem just establishes the criteria for the correct answer, which doesn't impact how you are approaching the stimulus. And so there's no reason to read it before uh, you read. Um, um, th there's no reason to read the question stem before you read the stimulus. Now, I, I, I had a huge epiphany on logical reasoning that I talk about in... Um, you can find it on YouTube. If you search struggling with logical reasoning, you'll find me sans the beard uh, talking about uh, my logical reasoning epiphany. Um, and it comes back to something that we talked about a little bit earlier, this idea of the time pressure making you do things that, that won't actually make you be successful. Um, so let's keep it going. 15 minutes left, guys. I love it. I love it. We have so many questions. I don't even think we're going to get through them all. All right, Rebecca, do you have tips on what to do if you start to panic in the middle? Breathe, right? Usa, usa. Now remember, um, even though I used to, to mess with my students a lot when I used to teach in class about how, you know, this is it, guys, right? I mean, if you don't do well on Saturday's LSAT, I mean, will there be any reason to, to wake up the next day? I mean, the LSAT determines where you go to law school. It's going to determine your future jobs. It's going to determine your future friends. It might determine who you marry, right? I mean, what your kids look like, who your kids are friends with. I mean, this is, I mean, everything is riding on this exam, right? Um, and obviously, I'm completely joking. Um, well, listen, it's a really important exam, right? Regardless of how it goes on Saturday, the sun's going to come up on Sunday. And so I think what's important is try to keep in mind that freaking out and panicking is doing nothing but harming your ability to achieve your goal, right? And again, right? So, you know, we've been, we've been training for a fight, right? Um, we've been, we've been doing all the work, um, you know, so trust in your ability to be successful. Remember, I can tell you one thing for sure about Saturday's LSAT. You have seen the questions before, right? They're the same questions. All they're doing is changing the subject, right? So remember that, have faith in, you know, your, your prep, your work, and, and just go do your best. And remember, if it doesn't work out, remember my story, right? My journey from the 140s to 174 in Harvard Law School was not easy, it was not fun. I took it once, canceled, right? Um, so it, it was really, like I always say, it was one of the most difficult times of my life, hands down. But look at the door that it opened for me, right? And remember, if, some, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Like, you know, I always remember Elle Woods when, you know, she tells people that she's going to Harvard Law School and, and they're surprised and she's like, what? Like, it's hard? I mean, like, what? Um, so, yeah. Moving right along, when would be a good date to register for the December LSAT? Well, David, good thing you asked that question. There is no December LSAT, so uh, never. Um, the next one's coming up here. Obviously, we have Saturdays, uh, September LSAT, then we have October, November, uh, and then we jump to January uh, for the next one. So um, you, your options are going to be November and January. And remember, for some schools... If you're applying to try to get into the class starting fall of 2020, January will be too late. By the time you receive your score, uh, the application deadline will have passed. All right. How heavily do you think law schools will scrutinize you taking the test twice? No, they won't scrutinize it at all. Now, so I wouldn't worry about that. Remember, they don't even average anymore. So if you took it and, and kept it, had a low score, all that matters is getting the score that they need to report back to the ABA so their class ranking doesn't change and they can invite you uh, to join their class. So that's the only thing that matters, Ali. Uh, don't worry uh, about um, um, taking it twice. Yeah, exactly. Nick's, Nick's right on, on point about that. Um, it used to be the case where they averaged. That's why I canceled. They, you know, if, if I was taking it in today's world, you know, I probably still would have canceled because I, I knew I made a mistake. Um, that I caught on logic games and I knew that if I didn't get a perfect on logic games, um, no chance. And again, more than twice, again, I don't think it matters. I think all that matters is getting the score that they're looking for. Now, 
obviously, you know, I think if you're in a scenario where, you know, they're starting to, the class is starting to fill up and they're debating between you and somebody else and somebody else, you know, has it on a first attempt, would they consider that? You know, I, I don't see it because it, it, it doesn't impact their class ranking that you took it multiple times. And so I think what they're going to do is make a decision based on which candidate puts their class in the best position to be a really nice class. Remember, a lot of, a lot of considerations come into how they create class, uh, classes. And remember, when you look at the 2575s for every school, you know, the fact that there's a 25 tells you 25% of the students that they're admitting have below that LSAT score, right? which means that other factors are letting them still get accepted, right? So um, I think it's really important to, to keep that in mind um, a, a, as, you, as, you, as you go through it. But what do we do if, we have, if there's a question that we have no idea how to answer? Well, Jen, I, I would definitely skip it. And again, particularly now with the digital LSAT, no, uh, no need to worry about, um, you know, misbubbling. You know, I think, again, what you should be focusing on um, – is getting as many questions correct as possible. So wasting time on a question that you have no idea how to answer is not helping you maximize the number of questions you get correct. It's just wasting a lot of time. Um, another question from David here. If you don't do good on the October or November LSATs and don't get into law school for fall 2020, do you have to wait a whole year to get into law school again? Well, so again, I mean, remember, not every law school's application cycle is going to be closed as of the November LSAT. There's a lot of law schools that will accept January, February, uh, March, April, right? Um, so it really depends on the schools that you're interested in and their application deadlines. Um, but yes, like it's, it's possible that that does happen. If you, you know, for example, if you wanted to go to Harvard and you don't do well, uh, or, or you, I mean, again, you can always apply, right? You can apply with any score. Um, but if you don't have a score that would give you a realistic chance, you're not going to be able to do that in, in January. Um, uh, now, you know, if you already have an LSAT score, you could always apply, right, and maybe submit an addendum um, and say, you know, please hold final decision until you receive my January score, right? But, you know, that's something to check with admissions people. I mean, again, we have admissions consultant people on staff that are happy to chat with you about that stuff because I think every school is going to react to that stuff differently, and I am not an admissions expert. You know, I, obviously, I went through the process myself. I was able to gain admission to, to some of the top law schools, but um, I think that was more because of my LSAT score. And then again, the one thing I can say is personal statement is really important. Um, so definitely spend the time on the personal statement between now um, and you, whenever you get your score. Um, Would, would you recommend for the fifth section we add to our fourth section? So I, I always apologize, guys. I'm not sure what Instagram is doing with these things and how I can't see the actual question. Um, so I, I'm not sure what the, the question was. But again, remember, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Um, I think doing, you know, again, in our world, because our four section exams is two sections break, two sections by putting a section first, you go three, break two, which is exactly like the digital LSAT, right? Now, obviously, if you were doing a paper pencil LSAT, it doesn't matter where you put the experimental section. Um, in terms of what to use for the experimental section, I would try to focus on sections that you struggle with. Like for me, my nightmare scenario was back-to-back -back reading comprehension passages, right? Like I hated reading comp one section. Imagine I go back-to-back -back reading comp, right? Um, and so I would actually force myself to experience that nightmare in practice exams because I thought to myself, if this were to appear for the first time for me on my real LSAT, I'm going to have a problem. Um, so again, any last minute tips for you guys taking the, 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 the se September LSAT again, you know, um, don't forget your ID because they won't let you in. Um, and try to relax, right? As we talked about, you know, don't do anything crazy between now and, and Saturday or, or if you're, you're, you're a Sabbath, there's a regular good Sabbath. Um, you know, you don't want to burn yourself out, right? I think the other thing we talked about is grab a few toss up logical reasoning questions or, or logic games, right? Do them in the parking lot just to get your mind into LSAT test taking mode before the big day, right? Or before the real exam. So, um, your brain starts to gear up, 
um, into that, you know, uh, before you actually see a real question. Another thing we mentioned is, you know, try to do something physical tomorrow uh, so that you can hopefully fall asleep because um, your mind will likely be um, racing. Um. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I know that's the thing. You know, everyone, it's the beauty of the LSAT, right? Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, I, I would imagine um, that that if you got back-to-back -back games, then maybe uh, that that wouldn't be um, something you would you would be thrilled with. But again, I think that's the thing that we're talking about, right? Every student is different. It's really about understanding your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, and coming up with a roadmap that gives you a realistic chance to achieve your target score. So for me, games was my best section. Perfect on games. Two to three on logical reasoning three to four on reading comp for a maximum wrong of 10, right? That was my approach. That was my roadmap. And I, everything I did was trying to tweak to get to that point, right? And so that's a great way to think about it. Um, what score do you need to be considered for scholarships? You know, again, every school is different. I think um, what, what's really important uh, uh, to, to think about um, uh, from, from that perspective is... Um, Um, if you can get above the 75th percentile, I think you're going to have a really good chance at, at getting some scholarships. Now, remember, some schools don't offer merit-based scholarships, right? For example, uh, Harvard Law School offers no merit-based scholarships. It's all need-based scholarships, right? Which I think is great. Um, if you need it, they give it to you. If you don't, they don't. Um, so um, what makes LSAT Next better than Blueprint, Kaplan, etc.? That's a great question, Ashley. I appreciate you asking me that. So, you know, a couple things. I think, you know, one, in the digital LSAT world, uh, you'll be hard-pressed to find any company that um, offers digital LSAT prep the way we do. And I think that's just from the fact that we started digital LSATs back in 2012 when we released LSAT Max, right? I mean, our vision was to bring LSAT prep to tablets. Um, again, using that technology to try to address some of the other inefficiencies that we think pervade the space, you know, variance of instructor quality, limited access, set schedules, uh, teach to the mean, right? These are all the things that, that we're trying to um, address with, with LSAT Max. So, you know, again, um, I think you can have a, a great LSAT prep experience with any company. I think with LSAT Max, um, every student has a great experience because we've eliminated the variance of that, uh, and then also created a system that allows students to progress through their prep at a pace that makes sense as opposed to trying to cram it into a really short window, um, which I think is, is problematic. Um, Well, so again, so I, so a lot of people say, how do I know when I'm ready to take the LSAT, right? And we're, we're getting down here to a uh, two-minute warning, guys. So let's uh, wrap it up here. But so one of the ways to know if you're ready, right? When you say, I got a 138, does that mean I'm going to score 138? You know, I think, you know, how did I know I was ready? I knew I was ready because I could consistently break 170 on my simulated practice exam, right? And that... You know, when you look at the LSAT Max calendar, and again, anybody can download our calendars. They're part of the free trial, right? You know, littered throughout the calendar is simulated practice LSAT. And the reason for that is simple. We should not be guessing where we are. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be walking into the LSAT hoping you're going to do something, right? Now, again, like, don't get me wrong. I think even if you've achieved your target score in practice, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you feel the confidence to get it every time, right? Again, I do think that that comes. I remember when I took it the first time and I canceled, I walked in hoping I would break 170 because I had done it a few times. By the next time I took it, I walked in knowing it was going to happen because I was so much more confident because I had continued to do it in, in, in practice, right? And when they talk about the exam clicking, right? And when I talk to you about the one thing I can say for sure for you guys on Saturday or, and Mondays, everything you're going to see, you've seen before. Right. That's how somebody like me, who was clearly not a natural, was not only able to improve their score, but take it a step further, can go and repeatedly score high over and over and over again. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons LSAC probably instituted that new policy. If you score 180, you can't take it anymore because, yeah, we get it. Anybody can really do that who has a good understanding of, 
of the LSAT. So what is it really doing for uh, anyone to keep, you know, coming and showing that repeatedly? Um, so I think that's the way I would think about it, right? Try to use your practice LSATs. And again, guys, if you have any questions that we didn't get to, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can text us uh, at any time. Happy to schedule a consult. Best of luck to everyone this Saturday.